What's up everybody, my name is Dwight and welcome back to GeForce Garage. Today we built a small form factor battle box powered by the new GeForce RTX 3070. The GeForce RTX 3070 is the latest card powered by the NVIDIA Ampere architecture. With its 2nd gen RT cores and 3rd gen Tensor cores, it provides amazing ray tracing and DLSS performance starting at just $499. At this price, we decided to target our budget for our newest build to be around $1200, so we can have an entire RTX 3070 powered gaming system that's similar or faster in performance than an RTX 2080 Ti, for roughly the price of the 2080 Ti graphics card itself. To start it off, we paired the RTX 3070 with the new Ryzen 5 5600X processor. Together, they're going to provide great performance with really high frame rates. And then we threw both of those on a Gigabyte A520i motherboard, along with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 GB M.2, both from Team Group. All of this is powered by a Cooler Master SFX 650, and we crammed all of that power into a space-efficient Cooler Master NR200P. I really liked working in this case. As I'm sure I've said before, I really like building small computers. There's a lot of things to take into consideration, like the size of parts, what features you're willing to sacrifice going to an ITX motherboard, and obviously wire management. Overall, I think we did a pretty good job with this build. The case really lends itself to building however you want. There's a lot of options for moving things around, like the power supply cage, which I only realized until after I was done that I could have moved it to the front of the case, which I think would have made wire management a bit easier. Other than that, it was really straightforward. I opted for 420 millimeter fans to provide plenty of cold air to the GPU and exhaust it all through the top, and it works great. Well, there you have it. Now let's go see how this system performs. All right, so we're gonna kick it off in Fortnite at 1440p at epic detail, ray tracing on, and DLSS set to quality. We kept at above 100 frames per second, averaging around 110 to 120. Over in Watch Dogs Legion at very high detail at 1440p, ray tracing set to high and DLSS set to quality as well, I saw an average of about 75 frames per second. In Call of Duty Warzone, on ultra detail again at 1440 with ray tracing, I maintained around 130 to 140 on average. And to top it off, in Call of Duty Cold War multiplayer, at 1440p ultra, DLSS set to quality with ray tracing on, I saw a pretty consistent triple digits around 100 frames per second. 